How beautiful was it outside today? Amazing, exactly. Very nice. Um, and I'm so glad to see so many of you here um, after dinner for what I think will be a very interesting series of, of discussions. So we're, we're going to have, um, I'm going to have a fireside chat with um, Farak Ezajabasha, and then we'll have um, uh, Sardar Kuzul, Kuzul afterwards, um, afterwards talking, and then we can break and, and resume our, our drinking for the evening. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to um, introduce our, our next guest, who is a very prominent businessman here in Turkey. He is part, um, he is the vice chairman of Ezajabasha Holdings. Um, and he, um, we had a lovely chat over dinner, and he's got really very interesting insights in terms of what the old economy and the, and the old establishment of the, of the business um, here in Turkey represents and why he's here and talking about entrepreneurship here um, at Startup Turkey here in Antalya. So please join me in a warm welcome to Faruk Ezajabasha. Chuck. <laughs> Merhaba. Merhaba. You know, you said uh, over, we were talking over dinner and you said you didn't, you, you, you we'll talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, but you look like an entrepreneur. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. <laughs> very, okay. very relaxed. Uh, for the sake of this evening, I put on a jacket. <laughs> very nice. Um, but, but Faruk Bey, I mean, you, you come from a, we, we were talking um, over dinner and you, you pointed out your, your family comes from, um, a, a long line of businesses, and your <clears throat> father set up as Ajabasha Holdings. Um, and you said some very interesting things that I think would I'd love to share with the audience here. But I, I think off the bat, I, I I'd love to just ask you, how do you define what By is an myself? Yeah, how do you define an, an entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I uh, how I would define an entrepreneur. First of all. I mean, with this distinguished audience, I definitely would not call myself a, I mean, a, let's say, postmodern or a new kind of an entrepreneur. But I, I guess I'm a little bit of everything. My, my dad was a classical entrepreneur and <coughs> a very strong personality with all its advantages and shortcomings of being an um, entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, he was a shrewd, courageous, intellectual personality. On the other hand, he was also a very uh, uh, emotional personality. I think these were all the characteristics of a typical entrepreneur. But at that time, in the beginnings of the 50s or at the 40s, it, uh, Turkey had almost nothing at that time. So, I mean, uh, compared with today's entrepreneurs, I mean, uh, it's, it was still very difficult. It was a fight against the general trend. On the other hand, uh, I mean, everything what was brought into the country was something new. And if you are successful in establishing that, uh, then uh, you became an entrepreneur. But I think that was not the most, the best par part of it. At the beginning of 80s, 40 years later, 50 years later, when Turkey started to become a uh, I mean, when it opened up it ga its gates to the outside world to, uh, and n was not satisfied only with the domestic market anymore. I think I have to give the credit to him that he took the courage and 
uh, of giving the whole responsibility of a good group of management. This is what, and this was what it saved, what saved the Azadjwashi Corporation at that time. I mean, we, were, we had a very hard four years of transforming ourselves from a strictly uh, entrepreneurial company for 40 years to a real institution with strong management. And that was the second uh, phase. And that's when, we, when I started my career in the company. So I started with an attitude of a strong uh, entrepreneur in the family. I was in the business part of the group. Now, I'm quite lucky to consider myself looking forward to join this distinguished group of new type of entrepreneurs. So I, I had a little bit of everything. Uh, but the entrepreneurs in the industrial age and the entrepreneurs of today, the, it's a complete different breed, I think. First of all, one is inter uh, industrialist, one group are industrialists, and the other group is just new economy. And you don't see the industrialists as, as entrepreneurs? Of course I see. <coughs> For today, I mean, of course there are entrepreneurs, and there will be industrial entrepreneurs in the next future too. But they, they, they are different. They are just different. Um, just to give an example, uh, and I think it was an issue this morning, what is the most important issue of an industrial entrepreneur? It's the product. It's the service itself. But for the new breed entrepreneurs, it's the company and it's the talent. These are the points where you put most, uh, mostly the emphasis on. And uh, the garbage can of the old industrial history is when the change of generation started. I mean, the companies were, were more or less the third or the second child of the entrepreneur himself. And I'm sure, uh, I mean, if they don't think about that, uh, they, I'm sure they didn't uh, do their lessons well. Uh, the first issue what they, uh, those guys in the, here should think is how, to get, uh, how do I uh, plan my exit? And this is, I mean, this was, this was kind of a taboo in the old industrial age. I mean, it was the company and it, was, uh, it, it should be inherited from generation to generation and to generation. Uh, oh, eight years ago, well, our last name is Ezaj Bashu, which means the he head of pharmacist. And we started with Ezaj, as a, we, once we were the biggest pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical group in the country. And now, we, uh, due to different issues, with, uh, due to the government, due to the market, we never had our R&D for ourselves. So we decided to sell, because I mean, we had nothing to say in the market. Our, it was either the uh, uh, state, the government, or uh, the companies whom we licensed their product from. So we said, um, it doesn't make too much sense of being in that uh, area. And we decided to sell a big chunk of the group. And uh, I mean, my f father, I mean, I, if uh, he was probably, if he heard that, I mean, uh, we are definitely not the uh, uh, best kids. And, but the reaction we got from the market in general, from the people, how dare you sell your uh, 
I mean, your family's company, your family's main business area. I mean, even family members, they were blaming us with taking this decision. That, that's an interesting point because um, I, I, think a lo I think a lot of people, when they look at a company like Ezajabasha, they look at it as, as kind of the old establishment in, in Turkey. And we're here at Startup Turkey, and it's very much part of the new Turkey mm -hmm. and, and the grassroots of something that, that's coming out new. Um, and I, I, I have two questions on that. One is, how, how did you, you're talking about your father, you know, saying that you're, mm -hmm. not, you're not very good children. Um, often my mother says that sometimes about me. Um, uh, how, how, do you, how do you kind of define that vision that you had? Because clearly you saw something at a moment. Yeah. Um, and able to do that. So if you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. I, I consider myself a kind of a split personality. I am a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> uh, on one side, I'm still an industrialist. On the other side, I'm eager looking for uh, new investment possibilities. But it's completely uh, separated from our own area. Uh, my experience a couple of years ago, when we started with a new venture, we, when we bought a, a company, when we, I mean, uh, when we be became partners with them, we had to go through a, a stage of legal procedures plus uh, uh, due diligence process mm -hmm. and I had to share with uh, our legal advisors in the corporation and some financial people in the corporation to go through that process and it I mean it took for six months seven months going all through that simple Procedures, and there you realize that the difference between a management team and an entrepreneur. If uh, I mean, a company which is on the startup process, they do not have time for a six months of a period for uh, a due diligence process. It has to be done just like this. Either you go, uh, you skip some of those procedures, but the legal people in the group, to save my, sorry for my word, ass, uh, I mean, they said, if you want to take the risk alone, go ahead. But if we are responsible, then you have to go through the process. Uh, we just went through the process. And when the next step was, of course, I, I had to separate my issues with the startups than to, uh, with my uh, main business area. Um, in terms of startups, it's, it is quite interesting um, that, that 10 years ago, this, this, this concept of startup really didn't exist in Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, you, you, you see it everywhere. And, I mean, you see it here very much alive here at, here at Startup Turkey. Um, why now? What has happened and why is the environment cr right now in Turkey and that we're seeing okay. it now? When I got into the business in the 80s, that was 30 years ago, third, uh, Turkey, third, Turkey was already in a, in a high inflation economy. It took 40 years until we got rid of this high inflation economy. And high, uh, high inflation is something very sneaky. It's not hyperinflation. High, hyperinflation, you just have for at least two or three months, you get into a deep crisis, and you have to solve out this problem. Mm -hmm. Israel uh, went through that, Germany went through that. There, there are a lot, lot uh, Russia went through that. 
there were a lot of co countries which went through that process. But high inflation is, I mean, you get used to that. And first of all, you don't have any money to dig for four uh, to put into uh, into some investments for four year and wait for the results uh, after that. You just need to get results immediately. And so nobody was interested in doing R&D. Nobody was interested in seeding. And uh, so almost two full productive generations went through that process after 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And I think my generation of uh, management managers, or let's say resp uh, business responsible people, uh, there are no use for, the, uh, for this generation anymore. They, they are born and raised or were effective in a complete different environment and in a very different ecosystem. Now, 10 years ago, we got rid of this high inflation. And then there was time to build up a new ecosystem with the incentives, with the institutions, and with the new breed of teacher and teachers and students. And now they are absorbing the rest of the world. They are absorbing, uh, observing United States or Western world. And now they are taking the advantage of being a new breed of uh, entrepreneurs. That's the, I think that makes the difference. And this is, again, I mean, a different kind of people. Um, and we're seeing, the, it's sort of, we're seeing the growing pains of that. We're seeing kind of the, the transition into this startup world, more people starting, starting their own businesses. And it's not just entrepreneurs bringing it about it's the their creative companies. people. It, it is, it is creative yeah. people. Um, but I also think that there's, there's a, bridge that needs to be built between the old establishment businesses to, to the new economy. And I think it would be interesting to talk a little bit about that. But I also think um, th there's also an investor piece. And so I think that the Ezadja Basha Holdings kind of represents both of them. And so how, how does that fit into what's happening now and how can they work together? Uh, with the old with the old type of, with the industrial business, I think we have to learn to make real R&D. And when we, are, when we do have a saying in the next future, in the global competitive market, we need to have this R&D uh, attitude. And that's where the buyouts, and the relations with the new companies will come in. And uh, small companies, small tar uh, startups, which are not B2C companies, by the way, who are directly very much focused into uh, R&D issues, into bringing up new products and services. And when they are flourishing, and when the L uh, when the industrial companies started to give their focus into R&D, then the matching will start, I think. Then this is the point. Now, I mean, most of the uh, talks, all the, uh, all the issues which we talked here today were mainly directed to the consumer market. Mm -hmm. And... I think to enlarge your business, you need to go, uh, the companies, the uh, industrial companies, or the 
I, or let's say the product and services companies, the bigger companies, they have to learn now together with market research, market development, to get into new, pro and new areas, new services, uh, and then, it will, uh, then they will start to acquire uh, uh, new businesses and startups. And it starts uh, right now. Uh, Archilink, I think it was Archilink, who was always into R&D. They acquired a company in uh, in United States, uh, a startup company in United States. As Ajivashi was mainly uh, was looking to the Western markets, to Germany and to uh, to England, and we acquired. Uh, a 70% of one of the oldest established uh, German companies, the tile division of Villere and Boch, which were owned by some princes and princesses, barons, a very blue-blooded company. But they, they wanted to get rid of the majority of their uh, tiles area, and then we acquired that. But that's, they were definitely not a startup. I mean, I mean, it's, the company was built in the 17th, 18th century or something. Right. But it's, 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 it was part of a learning process. Right. Well, and it's interesting that you talk about that and, and, and the acquisition by, by Archilic and, and what Ezajibusha has done, um, because I think that the, the old establishment investing in, in the startups in emerging market economies is is really critical and key, and you've seen that happen in India. Mm -hmm. You've seen the old the old established companies really come in and invest and acquire and and really be involved in the new technology companies that are that are coming up. Will we see that here in Turkey? In, good that you mentioned India because India was one of the pioneers of a new economy. Not only in the software market, they, ch they established their rules in the beginning of the 80s. And that changed the whole economy uh, of India in the 90s, at the beginning of the uh, 2000s. So there are a couple of steps ahead of us. We started with our institutions in the 2000s. I think that makes the big difference. I mean, are we late? I don't think that we are late. I mean, we have a quite big creative power. Uh, but as long as we are seamlessly able to proceed with our uh, development, I mean, I don't see too much of a problem. But India was ahead of us is still ahead of us. When does Turkey catch up, though? What, and I guess this is a good, it's a good transition to talk about where, where does Turkey go now, especially since it is this very volatile period in, in Turkey politically. Yeah. And the world is watching. I know that where I, where I sit in New York City, you know, every, everyone's always asking me what is going to happen in, in Turkey next. And the other question I get, because I follow entrepreneurs and the startup world, is what happens to Turkish entrepreneurs now? Oh, in the, I think in the long term, uh, I'm very optimistic. In the short term, we will have a couple of hur hurdles, apparently. I mean, you saw the explosion of creative forces in the Gezi Park. And that's still continuing, and that will continue. There will be always clashes between progressive and conservative forces, always. But I think the trend is general, generally with, uh, uh, towards the dominance of the progressive, as long as you have a free market, of course. There will be always clashes. There will be, there will be always, always confrontations. But the end of the day, as long as you are able to 
accept a mechanism or a free market in the sense of, I, I mean, I don't mean free markets as an absolute free market, but as, as long as you are able to allow the rules of the market, I think uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, let's put it that way. Uh, the, the technological development and the outcomes, it's always and was always towards a democratization process. It's good for the consumer, it's good for the individual, it's good for the uh, people. And that will continue. You can't stop that any anymore. And it's always for the in it's always towards the increase of the con and uh, comfort zone of the uh, single individual. And nobody, uh, I don't think that anybody will be able to give up that in the next future. Um. I, I was so excited when Barack asked me if if um, if I, I would would be willing to to have this chat with you. Um, and my and my the one question I had was, you know, it's so it's so interesting that you, you would want to come here and and talk to, oh, to talk to start a Turkey. Such a nice experience here. Um, and I I would love for you maybe to share kind of what what are you expecting to get out of out of startup Turkey and. And why is it important for you to be here? To here? Yes. I mean, I, I was just telling Burak, it's, an, it's a whole, whole month of an experience that I went through here. I mean, I'd never been in such a big group of motivated uh, breed of new type, whether they are investors or project makers or uh, researchers or uh, internet people. I never been in such a big group until now, and I'm very enthusiastic about that. Um, and I guess. As and thank you for accepting me, by the way. Oh, I think I think everybody's I, I think everybody's thrilled that, that you're here and and talking to them. And I think maybe as as we wrap up, if you can just if you have some ad advice for people who are starting out in their businesses and. I guess, and their investments. Yeah, I think the, uh, I'm not in, pos in a position of giving advice to anybody. But what I would like to say is that everybody needs a little patience, I think. The market forces need to be fast. And I think, again, I think it was Mustafa Bey this morning, was and. He, no, uh, somebody said uh, it's the best time of starting a startup, creating a startup, because the times are bad. That's true. If you start it right now, and when it becomes an economical boom time, then it will flourish. It will flourish like hell. So it's time to wait, st to start with the business, but wait for the successful results. And I think for, it will take a couple of, let's say a couple of years, probably one or two years. But I'm very, very optimistic for the future. Well, great. That, um, I think we're all on, on that very happy note. Um, we, it's such a pleasure, such a pleasure to talk Thank to you. Thank you, Elvira. Um, it was so nice to talk to you. Well, the, pl the pleasure is mine. Please join me in a round of applause for Mr. Farg as Thank you. Thank Çok you. Thank you. Ben teşekkür ederim.